Hey guys, Rambo here with a Dead Ops Arcade 1 video, where I'll be showing you how to determine which fate is which in the room of fate for both solo and co-op, since they each work a little bit differently, and I'll also describe the fate abilities as well. Timestamps will be in the description below, let's get right into it. On DUA 1, there are four different fates, Fortune and Fortitude, Firepower, Friendship, and Furious Feet. The fate of Fortune and Fortitude makes it to where weapons and most item pickups last two times longer than the normal duration. The two items that do not last longer of Fortune are the Monkey Bomb and Sentry Gun. Also, whenever you take a death with Fortune, you will always have a minimum 2 times score multiplier upon respawning. And finally, whenever you grab Fortune during the Room of Fate, your score multiplier will increase by 1, since a giant gem lands on your head. The Fate of Firepower grants the player a permanent death machine as their primary weapon. The Fate of Friendship grants the player a permanent bird that follows them around and imitates their primary weapon. Additionally, with Friendship, chickens on the map will last two times longer than the normal duration. And finally, the Fate of Furious Feet grants the player a permanent speed increase, so you'll move around very quickly, and you also get to start each round with a minimum of three speed boosts. Each player in the match gets to choose from these four abilities in the Room of Fate, which can appear after rounds 13, 14, or 15. When it appears during this Temple Arena is random. Speaking of random, the Fate selection in DUA1 was actually intended to be random as well. However, Due to, I guess, a bug of sorts, there is actually a way to determine what fate belongs to what door. Would you like to know more? A few seconds after you enter the Room of Fate, four yellow arrows will pop up. The order in which these arrows appear will dictate which fate is which. The first arrow to appear is associated with the fate of Fortune and Fortitude. The second arrow is Firepower. The third arrow is Friendship. And the fourth and final arrow is Furious Feet. These rules will always stay true. However, where each arrow ends up will change from game to game. So don't try picking the same doorway each time for a specific fate, as it doesn't work like that. If you're playing a solo match, immediately move your character over near the top of the statue, then carefully pay attention to the order of the arrows. The arrows will appear fairly rapidly, but by standing near the statue on solo, you ensure that you're able to see all four arrows properly appear. It's important to keep in mind that standing in certain spots, such as the area where you initially spawn in, only allows you to see three of the four arrows on solo, which is not ideal. Anyways, in this game, I want the fate of firepower, so I'll be looking for the second arrow that pops up. The order of the arrows here was down, left, right, up. So since the second arrow to appear was in the left doorway, Firepower will be over there in this specific match. Here's one more gameplay example for Solo. See if you can figure out which one is the Fate of Furious Feet, or the fourth arrow. Would you like to know more? If you're playing a co-op match, the expanded camera actually messes up the visibility of at least one of the arrows in the Room of Fate, so things get a little more complex and difficult to explain here. On co-op, the best case scenario is that you're able to see only three of the four arrows appear, and sometimes you may see even less. In order to ensure that you see three arrows, there are a few spots in the map that your team could huddle together next to. The spot that I like to gather everyone by is right over here, close to the left doorway. Just make sure that on co-op, you do not stand above the statue like you would on solo, as it will not work the same way. Now, I mentioned you'll only see three to four arrows. The arrow that does not appear will typically be for the doorway closest to your team if you're near each other. So if a bunch of players are gathered over towards the left side of the map, then the left doorway will typically have the invisible arrow. The problem that comes up with this hidden arrow situation is determining when the invisible arrow appears in relation to the other three arrows. Was the hidden arrow the first? second, third, or fourth arrow to pop up. Well, that of course changes from game to game, so you need to approach it like a puzzle of sorts. You have to closely observe the order in which the arrows appear, and try to identify a brief pause before or after other arrows. The most ideal pattern is that either your second or third arrow is the invisible one, in which case, you will notice a roughly quarter second pause between two of the arrows, indicating that the invisible arrow appeared then. Here are a couple of examples demonstrating this possibility. In this first clip, the order of the arrows will be down, top, left, right, with the third arrow being the invisible one in the left doorway. 
See if you could pick up on the brief pause that occurs between arrows 2 and 4. Having trouble spotting that brief pause for arrow number 3 on the left door? Take a look one more time, but now in slow motion. Alright, another example. But this time I won't give you the answer at the beginning. See if you can spot when the invisible arrow appears in this clip. The order in the clip that just played was down, left, right, up. The second arrow was the invisible one, as there was a brief pause between the first and third arrows. So hopefully you're following along so far. Those clips were technically the good outcomes where the invisible arrow was either second or third to appear. But where things get even trickier is when the invisible arrow is either the first or final arrow. In which case, you need to have a very good sense of the timing of how the arrows normally appear, or if you don't have a good sense of the timing, then it's really just a guessing game. If you notice the arrows took a little longer than typical to start appearing, that means the first arrow was invisible. Something to keep in mind is that the first arrow, for the Fate of Fortune, will actually appear while the yellow text on screen is still in the final couple of frames of fading out. It's a very difficult thing to pick up on in real time, but you could sort of use stuff like this, or even audio cues, in order to help you get a sense of the timings of when the arrow should start popping up. But it is very easy to confuse the first and final arrow if one of them is invisible, so don't feel overwhelmed if you manage to mess up the Room of Fate multiple times. Getting down the timing and being more consistent with determining the Fates on co-op really comes down to experience and having a good eye. So, sadly I can't help you with either of those two things. But with that being said, I'll show you a couple of examples where the invisible arrow is either the first or fourth in the pattern. Would you like to know more? We'll end the video with some additional information related to the Room of Fate. If you're playing solo and only see three arrows for some reason, you have the luxury of pausing the match, taking a video clip, then carefully dissecting the clip to see which arrow was invisible. On co-op, you cannot pause your match. So after the four arrows appear, you only have 35 seconds to choose your fates before getting kicked out of the room. So sometimes taking a guess towards the end is better than having no fate at all. If you ever happen to find yourself playing on an old school TV on standard definition, you then can actually see all four arrows properly appear on co-op. Playing on such TVs was a bit more common back in 2010, but most everyone these days of course plays in HD. And for good reason. If you play on a PC, however, you can actually change your FOV to 45 during the Room of Fate, which allows you to see all four arrows on both solo and co-op no matter where you stand on the map. In order to do this on PC, go to the Black Ops folder in your files, and then to Players. Right-click and edit the configuration notepad file with the binding that is highlighted. If you edit this, you can switch to 45 FOV during the Room of Fate specifically, then you can switch back afterwards with that binding. However, this specific trick apparently does not work whenever you're the host player on the Steam version of the game. Anyways, that about wraps up this video. I also have Room of Fate guides on my channel for both DOA 2 and 3, so you can check those out in the description below. Don't forget to drop a like if this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.